Here is a party of women and children arriving in Crystal City, following their voluntary decision to join husbands and fathers in detention. Practically all of the children and many women were American-born. Incoming parties were greeted by a detainee welcoming committee and band music. New arrivals and their baggage were examined by inspectors and matrons. Money and valuables were placed in the facility safe and detainees given receipts. Following the admission procedure, they were fed in the central mess. They were then escorted to quarters, which had been assigned in advance of their arrival. The sun shines practically every day in the year, with a cool breeze from the Gulf in the evening. Originally, it was a migratory labor camp of approximately 100 housing units, utility, and recreation buildings. To provide for a population of 3,600, we added more than 500 housing units, school buildings, a hospital, administrative, and maintenance buildings. We tripled the number of streets and extended electric and sewage facilities. This is the perimeter over which armed guards kept a 24-hour watch. At night, the illumination from the lights along the top of this fence was visible almost to the Mexican border. Both groups cultivated flowers with great pride. Seeds were purchased by them with their own money. They also paid for and built the screen porches, you see. For such items, which were considered morale builders, they could draw on their personal funds. Each housing unit was furnished with running water, an ice box, beds and linen, chairs, and some with toilet facilities. Community showers and latrines were located throughout the area. People who had to be isolated for medical purposes were placed in cottages like this, which were equipped with modern conveniences. There were about 50 of these in the area. <laughs> 